Good evening at 6.30. I'll call to order the Planning and Zoning Commission meeting of Tuesday, December 20th, 2022. We do have a quorum present. And the first item on the agenda is approval of the minutes, considering the minutes of December 6th, 2022 joint meeting. If there are no additions or corrections, may I have a motion, please? I'd like to make a motion to approve the meeting minutes. Motion is by Francis. Second. Second by Alvin. Don't forget to hit your button. <laughs> Seconds by Alvin. Vote now. Motion passes four to zero. <clears throat> the next item on the agenda of tonight is to continue the public hearing from two weeks ago of a zone change request from Agricultural Open Space District to plan development mixed use. It's on approximately 7.94 acres out of the El Bourgeois survey, abstract number 52, located at 301 and 333 Euchre Lane as requested by Patricia Fant McAdams on behalf of Euchre Lane LLC, then Kataramana Mirari, the property owner. Good evening, commissioners, and uh, happy holidays. Uh, yeah, so um, as Mary Ellen had said, uh, we're picking up the public hearing on this one. Uh, it was continued from December 6th uh, to allow the applicant to post the signs for up to 10 days uh, prior to the public hearing. Uh, the subject property for this one is currently zoned agricultural open space. Um, it is zoned that way because most properties, it's standard that when they are annexed to the city, um, they're zoned agricultural open space. Right now it's just got a, a uh, single family home, <clears throat> excuse me, a single family home on the property. Uh, the applicant is proposing a maximum of 21, 21 single family detached homes and 41 attached single family with 1.8 acres of open space on 7.28 acres. 1.5 acres of that 1.8 will be dedicated, dedicated to the city as parkland. Um, also, uh, just to the west across Euchre Lane, uh, the applicant already has a project um, of the name The Parks at Euchre, which it will be a complement to. Um, also to the east, uh, there is a church um, and an office building that's owned light industrial. Uh, to the north, across Oak Bend Drive, is a community of detached condos under construction uh, with the mixed-use zoning that is proposed here. Uh, to the south, across East Euchre Lane, is Villas at Rockbrook, the single-family detached subdivision zone plan development mixed-use, uh, the same as this one here. And to the west, across so South Euchre Lane, is, propo is a proposed single-family development from the same developer, the Parks at Euchre, as I just spoke on. Uh, the base PD, or the base MU zoning district of mixed-use, allows for a minimum of 4,000 square feet with a minimum width of 20 feet for attached and 25 for detached homes. The applicant is committed to having a uh, attached product with this project. Uh, the detached homes with front entry will have 20 foot, um, 20 foot front setbacks. Um, any rear detached homes will have a five foot front setback, three foot side yard setbacks, uh, 10 when, abut when abutting a side street, and 12 foot uh, rear yard setbacks. The minimum lot size proposed is uh, 3,750 square feet under the 4,000 uh, square feet that's required with the mixed use zoning district. Uh, attached products uh, will mostly be access from garages along the alley. Front entry homes will have five foot, five foot front yard setbacks, 6.5 side yard, 10 when abutting a side street, and 20 foot rear yard setbacks. Uh, the minimum lot size for those are 1,700 square feet. Uh, the architecture for the homes, um, the single family detached homes uh, will primarily be front entry. Uh, to mitigate the garage doors appearance, they must be decorative with windows or carriage style hardware. In addition, there are, in addition, there are provisions to prohibit repeat of a facade within five lots requiring a minimum of 80% brick veneer and require architectural features 
Uh, townhomes are required to be clearly distinct through the use of materials, colors, vertical elements, or articulation. Uh, screening and fencing, a six-foot screening wall is required adjacent to the light industrial zoning to the east. Along South Euclid Lane, East Euclid Lane, a six-foot ornamental fence will be provided on the private side of the landscape buffer, uh, shown here. Uh, streets and access, the three internal streets built as part of the subdivision will conform to the standard street sections of the city of Louisville with 53-foot right-of-ways and a combination of 31 and 33 feet of pavement width for the front entry. The applicant will provide an escrow for construction of half of Euchre Lane adjacent to the southern and west of the property. Um, and also diving in a bit more into the open space, um, 1.8 acres of it is proposed um, for this uh, development, and that would be 22% of the, of the property. This area is heavily wooded and tree with trees that will be preserved. A landscape buffer will be provided along east and south Euchre Lane and new landscaping will be required on, on individual lots uh, at the time of building permit. Uh, staff recommends that the Planning and Zoning Commission recommend approval of the proposed zone change to the City Council as presented. If you all have any questions for me, I'd be happy to answer them. Okay, before I open to the public, do we have any questions for staff? Any discussion on this item? I have a, a few questions, if you don't mind. Is, are there amenities in this development? Pool, community pool, or anything like that? I mean, mostly with like the parkland, I'd say is one of the big ones. Is this, did you say complementing the property to the south? To the west is the parks at Euchre, so the applicant um, is also going to be developing the parks at Euchre to the west across Euchre Lane. To the west, okay. And the drive aisle, I guess it's south Euchre, are they required to pay half of that right away? Not sure what the time Yeah, is. so uh, with both Euchres, um, because on the west side of this, there's a completely undeveloped right of way for, I believe, South Euchre Road. And then on the south side is East Euchre, which isn't confusing at all. We're going to try and address that a little bit. Um, but both Euchres, the, the code requires the applicant to either pay the escrow or to construct half of the street. Now, they'll have to construct half of the street on South Euchre, which is the one that runs north-south on the west side of the property just for access purposes. Um, and they're looking at constructing, we're looking at them at constructing or escrowing for East Euchre on the south side. We received the escrow for the property to the south when that was developed. However, it was an older escrow fee, so it's not quite substantial enough to cover the cost today. Of course, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and lastly... The, the fencing that you mentioned is there is a masonry fence on the east side, but on the other, I guess, two sides is it, um, is a wood fence. And what type of wood fence is it? Just out of curiosity. I'm is not sure standard? the standard for the wood fence, but yeah, I'm going to say typically probably whatever the building permit would allow. Michelle, if you have any. So I believe they're proposing to do a wood screening fence. So they are going to do the masonry fence where the single family residential backs up to the commercial properties. Now on the south side of East Euchre where we have the villas at Rockbrook, they did a wrought iron open fence and you can see straight into those backyards. They would like a little bit more privacy on their subdivision with their backyard. So they are proposing to do a solid fence, we'd accept uh, uh, if they wanted to do a wrought iron with uh, screening shrubs kind of fence, we'd accept that too. The property that he's developing on the west side, none of those homes actually back to the street um, because of the way it's configured. There's just lots that side to the street, so there's not going to be any screening except for the wood privacy fences for those couple of homes that side to South Euchre across South Euchre. Okay. Yeah, because on the south side there, it's pretty much an alley buffering euchre mm -hmm. okay but no no requirement for like a board on board or any kind of specific quality of offense i think typically board on board is like okay standard throughout building apartments with wooden fences okay those are my questions i was just i was just curious kind of and then there's nothing along the north facing the park detention on those homes so those homes on their backyards um, could opt to have any fencing that's permitted. So it could be a privacy wood fence. It could be an open style fence if they wanted to have views into the open space. So those, the builder would likely put up something, but those homeowners might change it over time. Okay. So is that the discretion of each lot at that point? Okay. All right. Thank you. Anything else? 
Okay, at this time, anyone reaching to speak on this item, please come forward, sign in, and state your name. <clears throat> Having no one come forward, I will go ahead and close this public hearing. Commissioners, is there any discussion before we take a vote or motions? No? Okay, then. <clears throat> May I have a motion on this item, please? I'd like to make a motion to approve the zone change as it was presented to us. Motions by Francis. I will second the second, motion. Seconds by Ryan. <coughs> Vote now. Oh. Motion passes four to zero. Thank you, commissioners. This item will go for a second and final public hearing with the city council on January 9th of 2023 at 7 p.m. Thank you. Okay, the next item is to continue the public hearing for a zone change request from Plan Development Multifamily District to Plan Development Estate Townhouse District on approximately 16 point 719 acres tract of land out of the A Singleton survey, abstract number 1138, located at on the northwest corner of Lady Tesla Avenue and the Essex Drive extension, as requested by Brian Dench, PE of Land Design Inc., on behalf of Eric Stanley of Breco Lands, CHLLC, the property owner. Good evening, Commissioners. This pro the the proposed property is located in the Castle Hills plan development area and is currently zoned for multifamily. The applicant is seeking to change the zoning to a plan development estate townhouse to allow 10 single family lots and two open space lots. When the Castle Hills plan development was adopted earlier this year, there was a concept plan that showed the proposed build out for the entire Castle Hills area. Um, this area right here in the original concept plan just showed a detention pond and then drainage all to the south of it, though it was zoned for multifamily. The applicant has provided updated concept plans. You can see on your screen right here where it's showing or now where there was a pond. And it's a little difficult to see since we'd have to zoom in. And I cannot zoom in. But where there was a pond area, uh, essentially now, where the Essex connection is, it, it'll just be these 10 single family lots off of Essex. Um, another requirement of the original plan development was to allow the rezoning of any of the subdistricts of this plan development um, to allow that through the process taken up before the Plan Zoning Committee and City Council. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions you may have about this. Commissioners, do you have any questions for staff on this item? So just out of curiosity, there was an open pond plan for it. Did the, the drainage aspect of it change? Is that what opened up the... Right. So if you can see this concept plan, there's still a large drain drainage component on this property. Just an original concept, there was really nothing programmed for this area. I think it showed a, maybe a retention pond in the area. But um, drainage, obviously, is something we, we look through with any of these developments. Anything else? No. No? <coughs> okay, if there are no other questions, I'll go ahead and uh, ask anyone in the public who wishes to speak on this item to please come forward, state your name, sign in. Having no one come forward, I will go ahead and I will close this public hearing. And commissioners, if there is no other discussion or questions, may I have a motion, please? I'd like to make a motion to approve the zone change as presented to us. Motions by Francis. Second. Second by Alvin. Vote now. Motion passes four to zero. 
Thank you, commissioners. This item will appear before city council on January 9th for a second and final public hearing. Thank you. Okay, the final item tonight on the agenda is to adjourn the meeting, and may I have a motion to adjourn, please? So moved. Motion by Francis. Second. Second by Alvin. Vote now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Motion passes four to zero. We are adjourned. Looks like Patty looked at you.